Welcome to the podcast show by Kay Vandavani, The Total Connector, Total Bitcoin, Austrian Economics, the hardest and scarcest money ever created in human history, Bitcoin. Welcome to the Total Connector Show. It's all about total Bitcoin, total freedom, total decentralization. It's about the hardest and scarcest money ever created in human history. It's Bitcoin. So my special guest is uh, Max um, from Hoddle Hoddle. Thank you so much for your time and sharing. Hey. Hey. How are you nice doing? Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. I'm doing good. All good. All right. So, um, Max, I don't know where to start. Um, there's been a lot of, you know, discussions, uh, and um, I, I wrote a bunch of questions. I don't know where to start. Um, can you just describe um, for my audience, uh, listeners, viewers, uh, what is what is Bitcoin? Uh, what is what is what's your path to Bitcoin? First of all, that would be it would be of you know high in, high interest to me. And also, what is Hoddle Hoddle about? When we're so talking first- about yeah, the fir- the first part, my path to the Bitcoin. Actually, I was uh, ten years. I was um, on the dark side. I was a, a private banker, so uh, <laughs> like I had a ten year career in uh, as a private banker, asset management manager, wealth manager, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, then at some point, one of my customers just introduced me to this concept of Bitcoin. Uh, was uh, I think it was 2012 or 2013, something like that. And um, in 2014, I started to researching the topic, uh, the Bitcoin and crypto in general. And in 2015, um, he invited me to join his startup. Uh, it was Bitcoin-based startup. And um, I thought, well, I always was fascinated by um, IT and, and finance. And um, I always wanted to work in FinTech. And I think the Bitcoin is, well, actually the purest FinTech that you can get. It's uh, basically uh, decent, decentralized finance running on the code. And the code is low. But still, there's much of economics into that. Uh, if you will read like Satoshi white paper, you will see that it's not only technical, it's also strongly uh, economical, political statement as well. So um, I thought, yeah, Bitcoin is a perfect fit for me. I was. Uh, Max, are you still there? I think you're frozen or bit tired of the sorry you, um, you cut off just yeah. for a few seconds yeah. sorry uh, I understood at some point that um, well um, the, the the problem is that um, I think in like I was sitting in my office and I was thinking that in 10 years there's no need for her bankers anymore at least uh, how I felt about being a banker uh, because you know the new generation they don't understand uh, why you need to go to the bank and why you need to go through this all compliance procedures like KYC ML why you need to go to scan your ID just to have an account just to receive money legally and um, yeah just like for example just today I was speaking with my younger brother he was like describing his experience going to the bank and he's like well like uh, why I need to spend so much time, do so much effort to open a bank account when I can like spend five minutes and I have a Bitcoin wallet on my phone and I can receive and send money uh, in a censorship resistant way, no middleman, uh, easy. Anyone in, in the world can, can send me money and I can send money to anyone in the world. And that's how people, uh, especially younger people, they think and I think that's how money will evolve. Um, like at some point, we, don't, we, we will understand that we don't need a middleman or the person who controls our cash flow. Um, what is Hodl Hodl? Well, Hodl Hodl was actually created in mind that, that you don't need a middleman. Um, in that case, it, it's applied to um, 
to a trading to trading from from bitcoin to fiat and fiat to bitcoin so basically hodl hodl is a peer to peer non custodial crypto exchange bitcoin exchange we we only offer a technical support for bitcoin uh where we're somewhere in the middle between BISC and local Bitcoins uh, because we're not software based like BISC, but we use the same multi-sig approach, two out of three. When you trade, each time you trade, you, we create a unique escrow account on the public Bitcoin blockchain. You can check it out in a blockchain explorer. And uh, But we're web-based as local Bitcoins. So we're not centralized as local bitcoins is because we don't have any wallets and, and when you trade on holo holo you don't trade within our wallets but we are not decentralized in that sense that we still have some servers because we're web-based we still have a web page because we're web-based so we're not so much decentralized as as BISC because it's a software so we're in the middle and we're quite young comparing to those to, to both of these projects like uh, I think uh, local bitcoins are already operating since 2012 or 2013, maybe a bit earlier. Um, but I, but I'm like maybe I'm mistaken. And BISC is uh, operating since 2014 or 15, something like that. We just launched last year, like in February 2018, and uh, we've managed already to onboard more than 10,000 people and uh, made like made a lot of uh, of smaller trades and like yeah we, we we're getting our traction people are like starting to to use hodl hodl more frequently and yeah that's that's what hodl hodl about oh yeah and we are non kyc ml because again we don't hold any funds mm -hmm. uh we just offer a technical solution this uh multi-sig uh, escrow accounts that we do uh, so in that sense, we don't process any crypto, nor we, do, we don't process any fiat. Which would make it easier for the regulators, one would assume, right? I mean, they can't just yeah. say, right, you're non-custodial, you're non, you know, you don't hold anything, right? You just, you're just in the, what do you, how do you, what do you, how do you describe it? Like uh, your platform that actually facilitates uh, uh, it's not it's not even facilitate we just offer uh, a marketplace where everyone can go and publish their uh, their offer to buy or to sell BTC and everyone can accept or or trade with that person well the only country that we don't serve is US <laughs> <laughs> because uh well actually we treat that uh we still have we, we still receive a lot of love and positive vibes from u.s community we still have like a, uh, like a ton of support from from u.s community and we like uh, each each day basically we receive uh messages and 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 uh comments on the twitter like uh please like uh, make make hodl hodl available in u.s and it's very popular although like you only if you're from us you can only just go to the website you can check it out but you cannot trade and you cannot sign up uh why we don't do that well in the, in the same manner why bitmex is not trading uh is not available for us citizens we, we 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 unfortunately we believe that dealing with um us uh, residents is a legal threat for us uh, even with the non-custodial stuff that we that we make, we still mm -hmm. believe it's it's a legal threat, and we also believe that peer-to-peer -peer exchanges are exchanges for countries that that are not so sophisticated in terms of financial uh, instruments and financial system. Like in US, you have like a tons of option of options to buy uh, BTC, like Coinbase, uh, Bitstamp, Kraken. Uh, you you have local Bitcoins there. You have BISC there. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is also, uh, I think, it's the best option to buy because it's again non KYC ML. And there's mm. there's so, not option, right, uh, Max? I mean, there's just hodl hodl and bisque. I mean, it, the real ones. Yeah. You know I mean, uh, decentralized or non KYC. Yeah, but there's non like st uh, still still the problem is that the, the many people in the world they're fine with uh, like giving their their personal data to some kind of guy out there. But the problem that um, actually people don't think that there's like 
seventy percent, around seventy percent of of the population in the world that is actually unbanked, and they mostly unbanked due to the fact that they cannot pass these KYC ML requirements, and they literally cannot open the account in any financial institution. Uh, well, that's the problem which which Bitcoin solves, and that's the problem what Hodl Hodl is trying to solve. So we are more focused on emerging markets. And in that sense, we're not so worried that we're not presented in the U.S., but of course, we're thinking and we're trying our best to, re to return to, to that market and to be presented on that market. Um, so we're now like working in terms of legal, how we can, how HODL HODL can be there in the U.S. Uh, because of course, we have like a lot of followers there and uh, we know that it's already like with HODL HODL brand, uh, we would make like um, good traction there in that market. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Max, I mean, do you think, I mean, I could just slap my own face because, you know, I can't, can't throw with stones out of a glass house because it, it is, uh, let's say, um, uh, you know, when, when you're on this kind of platform, centralized, whatever exchanges, they do induce you or I don't know, or, or it, it, uh, most people I think are, and I, I, I would include myself in past times and I use, I, I, now I'm much more paranoid, you know, giving away just my data or whatever, or, but do you think most people are just naive, like giving away their disclosing their, you know, in, in the course well, of the like, accuracy process? I, I think that um, some of people are naive and some people are just fine with that. You know, it's like they, they like to play by the rules that implied by other people. So it's like yeah. they think that it's the right thing to do, giving your personal data and all that stuff and well they're fine with that whatever i'm i'm not fine with that you're not fine with that and more and more people actually start to recognize uh, to, to, to like understand that it's wrong something wrong with the system yeah uh, like like uh banks are always saying and they're they're like continually like uh repeating the same mantra banks and governments that, well, we're implying the KYC ML in order to tackle uh, money laundering. But yeah, yet, who's money laundering biggest, really? Okay, but yeah, anyway. The biggest, <laughs> the biggest money launderers are, well, the banks and, and they're fine with paying like billion fines and, and all that stuff, but they still do that. So the thief is screaming, catch, catch the thief. So it's like, it's a bit nonsense. You, you, you are implying, you're trying to, like imply your broken system on a new system that is not actually willing to do that. You know, mm -hmm. if you, if you check, if you will check the latest um, reports from um, like analytical companies, I saw some on Twitter and, and then I read them that there's only like 2% of, of, of money being laundered through, through BTC. And um, it's like, People who launder money, I think they in general don't understand BTC. They understand like cash, mm -hmm. they understand banks, they, un they understand how this system works. They don't understand how blockchain works, how Bitcoin works, w what miners do and all that stuff. So like, um, but yeah, why people um, try to comply? Because these are the rules. These are, and like many people like to play by the rules. And uh, I'm not saying that rules are bad, but sometimes rules are wrong. You know, it's yeah. like. And then after, after all, you know, when you hear these stories or whatever, the Binance, you know, thing and uh, about uh, the exploitation or theft of data or, you know, extortion, black or whatever that is, whatever, you know, the potential abuse, that's that alone by itself. It's just crazy. You know what they can yeah, do with you, that you, data. You, you like, you can imagine that like a person who, who is like personal data uh, from financial institution is published somewhere in, you know, in like in open internet you can easily like track him down you can easily find that he's uh, he has some funds and you can literally like there are a lot of criminals who can literally go to his house and physically attack the person and try to rob him or try yeah. to get this funds from him so it's like it, it's really dangerous it's, it's, it's really, a huge risk yeah, exactly yeah 
And I mean, that, like, that alone by itself should be an argument for the regulators, for the governments, not to impose any kind of cable. I mean, I mean, or I don't know, under super high security standards that is super vetted. And you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just, it just doesn't make sense. Or like, I don't know, create any, any other system that is not uh, like KYC, but maybe some, some other system, which is, which is acceptable. Like the risk that you can accept so, or, you know, there's been like a research when, uh, um, like one economist, he actually calculated the, the optimal level of, of tax where people are fine with paying that percentage of their salaries to the government. And they're fine with doing so because they understand that there's no reason for them to try to cheat on the government and not paying tax because the the um, the the level was like i think it was a lot, around 13% something like that or or even lower and by that by this level the government would also receive uh, a maximum amount of taxes that he can actually receive because if you go higher than than that level you will most probably uh, create a gray economy like gray yeah. zone of economy black where market. people just yeah. black market or if you will go lower, you will receive less than you can, can receive. The same is with KYC ML. Um, like there's a certain, there is a certain level uh, which people can accept. Um, and this level can be like implied on, 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 on crypto markets, uh, on some like exchanges, uh, whatever, whatever. But you know, they just don't want to do that. They, they, they just want to take like, system that w that's been working uh not working but like <laughs> trying to work like for like 100 years they don't want to create anything new and just like you know imply that this on 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 new business and new sectors and new industries new technologies and they think it's fine no well i don't know i i think it's not is it, do you think it's a high to high degree complacency or technocracy, bureaucracy, and you know just stupidity? I think it's I, I think it's bureaucracy, like, um, and I don't think that ignorance, uh, maybe ignorance as well, but I think it's way more easier to take the existing existing rules and try to enforce people to 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 live by them than create new rules mm -hmm. because when you're creating new rules you need to accept them as well and you need to live by them as well mm -hmm. and you are used by the old system so that's 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 one of the reasons i think mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Matt uh, Odell, uh, you know, from uh, Tales yeah. of Crypto. Yeah. So he, he wrote on Twitter, uh, KYC requirements are both dangerous and ineffective. Criminals can simply use leaked, stolen or purchased data while honest users suffer increased theft and extortion. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Yeah, I, I completely agree with Matt. To the point, right? Uh, I mean... <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's always to the point. He's actually one of the vocal supporters of Hodo yeah. Hodo, although he is from US and he cannot use us, but he, he's a great guy. I've met him personally this yeah. year and uh, I hope to see him in Riga. He's already confirmed that he's coming to our awesome. country. So that, I'd love uh, to. this will uh -huh. be all, awesome. So, okay, let's go to the main question I have. Uh, how, because you see my, my podcast show and also my YouTube channel is about educating especially the masses, the newbies, the potential interested ones, you know, that are feeling it already or saying, hey, maybe I should buy some just in case it's Satoshi Nakamoto, <laughs> you know, as a store of value. So how easy, yeah. how, how easily can you facilitate, you know, this transition, the process or, you know, just simply said, how easy is it for a newbie? I would count even myself to that, you know, because people are overwhelmed, you know, even with that treasure hardware wallet or the first yeah. steps, how easy it is to go and hodl, hodl, whatever, create an, uh, some kind of account or well, any. Well, uh, in, order, in order to create an account, we have an account because we need to solve disputes if they are cured somehow. Um, so, um, well, to set up account, you only need a valid email address. You need to figure out the password and that's it. Uh, you're good to go. Like basically, oh. it takes under one minute to to create an account on Hodl Hodl. 
Uh, we have a tons of uh, guides. We have a video guides uh, on our YouTube channel, also available through our website. We have a guide which is like written in simple plain English. And not only English, we've been translated to like around 10 languages. Hodohod is available uh, in English, Russian, um, Chinese, Thai, um, the, like uh, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, like Japanese. German too? German? German too? Because Ger I'm German, is German is coming. Like okay. uh, in, in two months, there will be German. We also have a G German speaking support manager. So that, that not, th this is not a problem, not a language mm -hmm. that we're worried about. Um, how user and, friendly uh, is it, uh, Max? How user friendly? I mean, how is. many steps is it I mean, that, that you have to do? Well, Basically, you register, then you go, you either accept an offer or you create an offer. Uh, the process of creating offer is quite simple. And we are going to even more simplify it in upcoming months because we're like, now we're quite extensively working on redesigning Hodl Hodl, mm -hmm. um, making it even more simpler. Uh, we're Great. working with, with UX, UI ex experts, uh, because still, you know, in general, peer-to-peer -peer exchanges are a bit, bit difficult, a bit more difficult to grasp than like uh, regular ones, mm -hmm. like centralized exchanges. But, well, that's the price you pay for, for not disclosing your exactly. like, personal data. You know, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's like... Uh, the the price versus the quality that you get is way more better and yeah. the ratio is way more better so yeah in general it's quite easy also we have an amazing support team we've, we're available on telegram you can you can write an email we also respond uh, quite fast uh, in facebook and in, in twitter whatever so it's not hard um yeah i, I didn't finish about the languages the new language that is coming is turkish Mm -hmm. And yeah, and then German. Um, so yeah, basically, um, it's Hodl Hodl is easy to use, and we're we've been building this in mind that it should be way more easier to use than other peer-to-peer -peer platforms out mm -hmm. there. And actually, one of ideas why we decided with my partner to build um, Hodl Hodl because. Um, he he's he 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 was like pretty like uh he he, he had an uh, unpleasant experience with local bitcoins mm -hmm. during his first trade he almost lost his um uh, coins mm -hmm. uh i was like sitting for six or seven hours uh first time when i was on local bitcoins just to understand uh and i had experience at that point already like for one year i was already researching what is bitcoin the markets out there all that stuff um yeah but like as we say we don't say that local bitcoin scene is bad these guys are amazing they 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 actually uh this company all alone they created that's that thing which is called peer-to-peer -peer markets in, in in crypto and uh we should cheer them for that uh, but yeah, we're moving in direction that Hodo Hodo will become even more simpler. And um, yeah, onboarding is quite fast. No KYC ML again, uh, like to 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 say. And um, so yeah, basically you don't need to wait for anyone's approval to start trading or buying. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's quite easy. What, uh, what's the because the first step I think of is like how am I going to get my euro. Uh, on the platform, how, how does it work? Where, well, as with peer-to-peer -peer markets, you you just go there, you search for a payment method that you want. For okay. example, you accept, uh, you want to accept Bankwire, or you want to accept Revolut, or you want to accept PayPal, right, PayPal? PayPal whatever. Okay. And uh, you just search for a payment method that you want. We have some sellers or buyers, uh, depends on what you want to, to do, sell or buy. Uh, with all these payment methods we have a filter system you can you can just filter those offers that you like and then you just compare the price conditions payment window which is also quite important uh metric it's that uh, how soon you will get your fiat if in case you are selling mm -hmm. uh, also we have a rating system and feedback system so we we always say that you should check um like the, what what is what are their users 
are writing about this particular user. So you should choose your counterparty wisely. And then you just choose and start a contract with this person. And that's it. Great, great. Um, so, okay. Um, so, yeah, I was going to say, you know, I mean, the, 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 because the, I talked to Kyle Torpy today also, a uh, previous interview, and, in, and we talked a little bit about mass adoption, like what is the tipping point or the process or how can we facilitate or accelerate this process of mass adoption, what plays, you know, all kinds of, factors, parameters, internal, externally, geopolitically, macroeconomically. Uh, so the user friendliness, this easy user friendliness is for me total key to, you know, uh, let's say to the potential awakening once. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's going to happen sooner or later. We just don't know when, you know, something's going to yeah. happen. People are going to feel it. Will it be recession, inflation, hyperinflation? Then what I want to talk to you about is countries, you know, like the people, the poor people, you know, who are under sanctions, embargoes, who are really suffering, whatever that is, you know, Iran. So, I mean, are there more and more people from these kind of countries that are, you know, using hot or or Yeah. Talk uh, about? Actually, well, Yes, of course. The majority of our customers are from uh, emerging markets. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's mostly Eastern Europe. Well, of course, Europe as well, but mostly Eastern Europe. We have uh, a lot of traders from Asia and uh, Latin America and Africa as well. So these are the countries that are, that are using HODL HODL. We also have, though, uh, quite like more traditional markets like uh, Great Britain, uh, Australia is trading quite actively wow. on, 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 on HODL HODL. Uh, we have some offers from Japan as well. Um, again, we don't have US, but Canada is pretty active as well. Great. So, um, but as I mentioned, peer-to-peer -peer exchanges are more for uh, emerging markets. Mm -hmm. Because like developed markets, they have a lot of solutions to 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 like buy sell BTC. If you are already onboarded in this legacy finance, like if you have already like bank bank account, then you can actually like I don't know open account in any centralized exchange. Mm -hmm. If we say that. In the emerging markets, and it's true that there's no many people, not so much people that actually have a bank account, but there are more people uh, that actually have access to internet, people that are using mobile phones, people that are using uh, computers and all that stuff. So these people are in need of BTC and these people are in need to exchange it to fiat or to exchange their fiat to, to the BTC. And like some trades can can happen in cash in person, and uh, some trades are happening uh, like using the Western Union or all that stuff, which is available in many countries. We're charging so, exorbitant prices. Yeah, of, co of course, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. But yeah. It, I think it's yeah. it's their problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not, not ours. So, but yeah, in general, I think like. Um, we we're trying to serve everyone so like doesn't matter you're from germany you're from china you're from i don't know south africa or like argentina we have customers uh and, and traders from all over the world but uh, i think that the more need is in emerging markets mm -hmm. Do you think, you know, there's now uh, functionalities or what we call features or uh, uh, applications, uh, you know, as Wasabi and uh, Samurai Whirlpool, you know, to coin join mix, uh, you know, to increase the or uh, guarantee the privacy aspects. Uh, do you think it will be like an integrated part of HODL HODL, you know, everything like automatic by default? <laughs> it just, you know, just push the button um, and everything just takes care of itself, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know uh, I know that our developers have been, been discussing this for a while mm -hmm. and we might do that in the future. So wow. when, cool. you will, when you will send it to your wallet, uh, you will go it through, the, through Mixer or mm -hmm. something like that. So we will think of, we are thinking about it uh, we're moving in that direction and at some point most probably we will introduce this feature uh, but again like not storing 
uh, any data on our customers is already like a big step forward yeah, for totally. preserving their, their privacy. Awesome. So, yeah, and that's, uh, that's, that's the thing. I know that, that like some people are actually like uh, they're trading uh, on HODL HODL when they're trading on HODL HODL. They're, they're using, I know this from my like, people that I know, not like we're surveilling on our customers. I don't know which wallets they use, but I know from, from some people and I've heard some feedback that people are using actually Wasabi or Samurai and they're using this Whirlpool and, and Wasabi CoinJoin and all that stuff. Um, yeah, we might think about it for, for extra additional privacy. Great. So you guys had a, um, there was also on Bitcoin News, a Bitcoin magazine, an article uh, yeah. on the topic of liquidity. Can you, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, we have no liquidity week ongoing, uh, which is uh, basically the standard commission hodl hodl usually varies from 0.5% to 0 0.6 uh, for a liquidity week. And we want to make it like monthly, monthly week. We are decreasing uh, the commission for everyone to 0.3%. Basically, wow. buying and selling BTC on HODL HODL cost you the same uh, trading fee that will cost you on, the, on, a, on any centralized exchange because usually the centralized exchange's fee are, I think, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, something like that. So, wow. yeah, we'll just like for if, if this week will be successful. Most probably, we we, we will uh, continue with this tradition, and each month you will have a one week per month where you will be able to trade at zero point three percent. Great. So, so this is this is great news. So, so actually, you know, the liquidity is is you know a core <laughs> feature of a market. You know, so it's going to do you see like exponentially increasing? It's just the liquidity is just going to take care of itself. And the scaling uh, well, and whatever. We're also like uh, working. We have our OTC desk. We have like uh, partners uh, with who we're like asking them to bring their clients. We see that. Um, well, you cannot like the the there's like a very very small percentage of products that or platforms or services that promoting themselves because they're good, you know. Even uh, even though we believe that Hodl Hodl is is a very good product, we do understand it. We need to promote that. Mm -hmm. And with peer to peer exchanges, the liquidity is very hard. Uh, it's like one of the cornerstones cornerstones of uh, of any exchange. But it's uh, I think it's the biggest problem for any peer to peer exchange because uh, on a centralized exchange you can just borrow money from uh, if you are like. If you have your own centralized exchange, you can borrow money, borrow BTC from other exchanges or from your investors if you have them. And you just you can just create a liquidity pool and trade uh, with your customers. Like, And at some point, you will see that what we see on many exchanges, actually, that there are fake volumes or something like that. Uh, but some exchanges, they actually manage to do that without any fake volumes. They just add some liquidity from their own pockets or from the pocket of their investors or partners. And um, the people are just keep going there because it's easy to execute an order and it's fast. On peer-to-peer -peer exchanges, uh, although we have many awesome features like non-custodial, which is way more secure than you store your coins with any other exchange, um, which is like not giving your, your, your data, preserving your privacy, which is like cheap and all that stuff, the problem always is liquidity mm -hmm. because um, in order to execute your order on the peer-to-peer -peer exchange takes time. Um, as I mentioned, peer-to-peer -peer markets are diff way more difficult than, than like general markets. And you need to educate yourself be before you, you start trading, before you start doing something. And it takes time it, and it's process and it's way more harder. So by, by doing this liquidity week, we hope to attract more users and show them that they, it's like, yeah, you need to learn first, but then it's, it's, it's easy and uh, you will just get used to that. You will be way more educated and you understand the, all the 
nice points and all the positive sides of, of trading peer-to-peer -peer without, dis without disclosing your personal information and without handling your coins to any third party or any centralized authority. Mm -hmm. As you know, uh, George Orwell's 1984 is on crack right now in China. I mean, this is the total other extreme, total surveillance. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, I see a huge potential for hodl hodl. The question I have is about censorship, resistance, surveillance, you know, and even literally concerns fear of, about their own security in the literal sense and privacy. So I think a lot of people don't even know about hodl hodl or, or what they can do with that, why they should use HODL HODL. So I think once, I mean, is there, first of all, like a firewall? Like, is there specific countries that don't have access or they can only get like via VPN to HODL HODL? Is that possible or? Uh, well, actually, I think, no, we're not blocked in any country yet. Really? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that surprises me pretty much. Do you know that? I mean, yeah. Uh, you know what, because we don't, uh, like many people who, when you say peer-to-peer -peer markets, they know like local Bitcoins because these guys are like, as I mentioned, they're like quite old and uh, mm -hmm. the brand is very strong and they've, they've been like for six, seven, eight years already on the market. So mm -hmm. they, they've like made their trip. It's, it's been a long way. Uh, hodl hodl is still very young and uh, what we do we never invest in marketing we just keep investing in product development and uh, because we believe that the that uh, the best actually the best thing that you can have is to have a good product and people that are, are loyal to that product because our top customers are usually bringing their own friends peers and and counterparties from other exchanges or just their onboarding by themselves so it's a pure word of mouth uh, but yet we are trying to like to to jump in the other regions um we're like we have some like um some friends in media like bitcoin magazine is they're they're writing about us quite quite uh, oftenly uh why because they they do like us they do like our approach uh like there's also russian media called four o'clock we're in very good friends with them they're also constantly writing about us but we're not paying them we're not like paying for articles and all that stuff we just do our job and yeah it takes time to promote your brand it takes time to enter other markets but as um uh, as like history, even not not so long history of Hodl Hodl shows. As soon as people uh, get on board, as soon as person gets on board in Hodl Hodl, usually it means that it will stay with us, mm -hmm. mm, yeah. because the person understands uh, the value proposition that exactly. we have. Exactly. Yeah. And there's a need, you know. I mean, it. Yeah. You know, once they people feel the pain, that's the that's the issue over here. You know, you people are so either whatever conservative or not interested, and I totally I totally get it because you know we are in a store of value, a monetary evolution phase. Uh, you know, why do we why do we need you know to buy your coffee, the proverbial coffee with your satoshis or whatever? No need over here. Yeah. You know, it's in the really developing or third world, whatever we call it, emerging countries. So. Um, I was going to say something else. I forgot my uh, line of thought, but is there anything like really important that you want to uh, think you think potential, you know, uh, users or newbies or who, who, who really care about the privacy and should know? Uh, well, you should know that <laughs> when you're onboarding with Holo Holo, we don't ask you like, <laughs> Any, any questions, sensitive questions of, or your personal data, that's that's one thing. Also, you should know that we have, um, like, you can uh, you can publish your offer, but you can publish it in the private offer list. Like, for example, you want to preserve your, your confidentiality and you have a counterparty. We have this feature, which is amazing, actually. Uh, when you publish or create your offer, you can click on the button that, and this offer will be private and will it will be only accessible by the li direct link to your counterparty i know that people in some regions are using this quite uh, quite oftenly so we have a private offer list mm -hmm. and uh, like it's not visible to per to people on the public offer list so you, when you go to the hodl hodl 
if you are registered, even if you're a registered user, user, you won't be able to see that. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, it's a good feature. And also one, one interesting thing that we are doing now is, uh, we've like in June, we, we've introduced the lightning mode that mm -hmm. is available on HODL HODL. Mm -hmm. So we have two modes on exchange. One is uh, on-chain mode where you trade through the Bitcoin blockchain, like on-chain. And we have a lightning mode uh, where you trade on the lightning. Mm -hmm. Basically, we're like, I think the first or one of the few exchanges uh, in the world that actually offers not only like depositing or receiving money uh through the lightning but also trading through the lightning mm -hmm. so you Great. can enter the, the lightning mode on hodl hodl and it's suitable for like uh, actually i think the lightning and uh, the lightning trading mode is suitable for developing countries why because you can trade for a smaller amount like five dollars or ten dollars uh it will be very fast and it will be very cheap, like below cents or, or something like that. So um, the lightning mode, and we see from, from our statistics that people are actually using lightning mode to trade small amounts of money while they're using the own chain mode to trade bigger amounts of money. Great, great, fascinating. Um... You know, uh, you you mentioned UX UI because uh, I yeah. had an interview with um, what's uh, she's a great UX UI uh, infographic. What do you call a designer, Patricia Estevo? Uh, you know, and uh, and you know, I, I told her, listen, I mean, I really she has a really big role in this whole process, like uh, uh, collaborating, cooperating with the developers. What do you call them? That developers are uh, uh, the people who you know build these applications. So. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a really huge believer in easy, intuitive, user-friendly applications. You know, if we can simplify that, I know it takes time, it takes a process, technology yeah, it takes time, we like... need to be patient, but <laughs> well, that would be awesome. I mean, you know, I mean, just people as like plug and play, like using the internet, They're like going in, yeah. like, okay, yeah. I'm transferring, that's it, boom, and easy cheesy you know that. Yeah, it's like, but it's always like test and learn. And like, you know, again, as I mentioned, the the peer-to-peer -peer markets, I, I I really don't think that they will be at some point. They will be easier, definitely. They will be way more easier with new technologies coming in. It will be way more easier to do that. But uh, at the moment, uh, we're still like in the very beginnings, and uh, you know we are trying. We are cutting all the 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 visuals that we have there. We have now. Uh, we already saw some some examples that that our designer sent us how how hodl hodl will look in the future it's uh, it's really amazing beautiful and 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 everything is very nice but still you know it's a long way to go and but you got a great team you got a great team yeah that's we wonderful. have a great team that's true mm -hmm. uh I, mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, uh, I can say it's, it's, it's not even team. It's more like a family. Uh, but, um, but uh, yeah, I, I think that like in, in like in six, seven months from now, you will see a redesigned version of HODL HODL will be way more e better. And I, th I hope that it will help to onboard more and more people. Yeah, that's the that's the vision <laughs> that's not, the not vision. only not only to hodl hodl but actually to, to the bitcoin because we're just like yeah. we're just facilitators from the for general public to be onboarded on bitcoin yeah. so we hope they will do that yeah now it's really exciting to see this accelerated it's really accelerating i mean there's so much stuff going on you know from Blockstream yeah. to you guys to, you know, decentralized to to you know easy app UX user interfaces. It's it's a Lightning Network. It's it's amazing what what you know that rate of speed. It's just it's incredible. I think. I mean, it's, it's I think un unprecedented. You know, and that after 10, 11 years or so of bit. I mean, it's like you know monetary evolution in front of our eyes. You know, like <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. So, Max, thank you so much. Uh, you want to share any? I mean, I'm gonna, you know, put your uh, huddle, huddle info, everything on the show notes. But 
any any final thoughts or information people um share with well what i can share about the upcoming things of for holo holo so uh, we have now liquidity week we will have also lightning trading week uh this month we actually had one last uh, last month it was quite successful uh we will increase we hope to increase our capacity in terms of lightning trades uh for this month and and then uh, we will have a one lightning trading week again you will be able to trade uh on the lightning mode of our exchange with the discounted fee what's more coming in uh, yeah turkish language is coming in uh german language language is following as well and uh well many good ui ux improvements as well um like yeah I think I think uh, that's it about Hodl Hodl yeah and like we're kicking off our annual conference in Riga Baltic County Badger so if you, if you didn't bought the ticket we don't have much space left but anyway just check it out it will be way more better than the last year and hope to see you all in Riga in the middle of September very exciting very exciting mike okay well i learned so much i'm sure my audience too I mean, it's, it's just it's just incredible um so uh, max thank you so much i hope to you know have you back soon you. one way or another either on an interview or panel discussion even with other you know uh, like yourself you know bitcoin experts or bitcoiners and uh yeah uh have a good day and talk to you soon and see you soon hopefully <laughs> thank you very much bye-bye bye-bye mike ciao cheers